I want people to know that New Jersey City University is a vibrant, academically enriched, culturally and socially enriched community of scholars, staff, and students. That we provide a higher education experience at second to none, not only in New Jersey, but across the country. Babe Ruth smashed his 60th home run. Al Jolson starred in The Jazz Singer. Wall Street was about to crack. Charles Lindbergh opened the skies. And on September 29, 1929, on a 10-acre plot of land on what was then called Hudson Boulevard, the college first opened its doors. Housed in what is today known as Hepburn Hall, New Jersey State Normal School offered a two-year teacher education program for kindergarten and primary teachers. I read about Jersey City opening up. However, <laughs> the day school opened, I'm down there, right? And even though about 30, 40 men took, or boys took the exams, only six passed and showed up. I was one of the six, right? At the end of the week, we had about, uh, let me see now, there were 300 girls, right, and six men. At the end of the week, I was all alone. Now, the Jersey Journal got wind of it, that I, there was an only boy down at Jersey City State, right? So I'm coming out of the building, you know, about 3 o'clock, nice and easy. I was going to take my bus to go home. And I, Get them, girls! And about a million girls surrounded me, you know, and then they took the picture. And the next day, what happened? It was on the front page, the only boy in school, right? That did it. That September, about 30 men came down. Mm -hmm. And yet the rest is history. Hail Jersey City Normal School, Aye. we thee honor do, eternal love we give to thee. Whatever else comes out. <laughs> <laughs> well, like me, I can never remember the lyrics. Of well, that's a long time ago. Well, this is progress. It started as a normal school. When I was there, it was Jersey City Teachers College. Then it became Jersey City State College. And now as a university, I feel that it, it's be, being able to offer more for the students that go there. Uh, if, it, if I were there now, I would just stay from my bachelor's, master's, and right into my doctorate. That would be great. I've watched that place grow from New Jersey State Teachers College at Jersey City. It only became Jersey City State the year I graduated. My diploma says Jersey City State. Uh, and watched it go through, and lived with it, watched it go through that evolution to a multi-purpose college, to college with graduate programs, and then move on to a university status. It's not unlike watching your kids grow with your grandchildren. And, you, and I have the same kind of feeling. It's really cool. I decided to go back and ride around the college and I saw Rossi Hall, Bodra Hall, Margaret Williams Theater, um, what a Gross Nickel Hall. So many of the buildings are named after the, you know, the teachers I had. I remember Dr. Maxwell, who was uh, one of my teachers. He was a former president. He was great. I mean, you could go to him at any time and get any kind of help, and, and, and he was a real leader. I'll never forget that uh, my team in 1964 was the first team at the college ever to go to a national championship out in uh, Kansas City. That was the best part of my, I think, my life. The best part of my education, anyway, was, was uh, the time that I spent at, at Jersey City State College as an undergraduate. We had a lot of, of um, how-to teaching courses with some of, I think, the best people in the field. For math, we had Foster Grossnickel and Ernest Duncan. Uh, Foster Grossnickel was known as the father of new math. And on his board, there was a big question mark always. It wasn't just, you know, how to do th the examples. It was always why. Why is, you know, what is your thinking about this? How did you come to this? How did you solve this problem? And that there, were more, there was always more than one way to come to an answer. It was really good thinking. And that was one of his favorite phrases. He would, he would answer a question and he would say, now that's good thinking, Edith.
The more that we experience the type of climate that we have here, the more we'll realize that diversity is the future of the planet. And it's a wonderful um, future that we have, and, and I think we provide that. We take students from a particular point that may not have been a point of advantage, clearly not advantaged socioeconomically, perhaps not advantaged educationally, but through a period of time with us, they really expand, they excel academically, intellectually, socially, and we produce baccalaureate and master degree candidates who are second to none. I actually started my college education at another school. This was in the fall of 1962. And I knew that it was a big mistake. Thinking that it was all my fault and I should not be destined for college, I quit. Uh, much to my parents' disappointment, began working in an insurance company for a few months, uh, filing. And one day my mother said, this is such a waste of your brain and your talent and your energy. You have got to go back to college. So that's exactly what happened. I didn't choose Jersey City State College. My mother chose it. Uh, and I'm grateful to her to this day because it really changed my life. There was nobody in my family who had gone to college until me. I was the first. There were lots of other people like me. There were lots of other Italian Americans and Irish Americans and uh, African Americans. And we were all together in one big melting pot. And we, uh, I think, appreciated that about the college. And that had a big influence on me then. And it has stuck with me for all these years. When I look back on my years at the college, I remember being very stimulated having a lot of fun, making lots of friends. But I remember changing and growing up and being in an environment that really fostered that, that gave anybody who wanted to the opportunity to be better than they ever thought they could be. But I have never... Equipped with a strong academic background she acquired as a student at then Jersey City State College, Pamela Fiore immersed herself in a rich professional career and now serves as editor-in-chief of the prestigious Town & Country magazine. Inspired by the idealism she acquired as an undergraduate, Pamela devotes herself to numerous philanthropic causes. If I were offering any advice, it would be hold on to your dreams, to not settle. I think most of all, if you can make a career out of doing what you love, you can't possibly be unhappy. The university, uh, for me, uh, it always stood for a promise. Uh, a promise uh, to um, improve myself, a promise to uh, uh, be able to expand my horizons. I was given that promise by the person who recruited me, uh, my soccer coach. And based on that promise, I accepted to come without even visiting the campus, and I never looked back. I was born in the United States, but left at a very young age and lived overseas for the first 15 years of my life. When I returned to the US, in many ways, I was an immigrant, and I found myself in the middle of a very large uh, campus with tall buildings, with big spaces, and almost encountered a cultural shock. But what happened very quickly is that I met people that took me under their wing, and they made me part of their family. We all felt that we were underdogs, that here we were, often competing in sports against superior arts, against superior athletes. But we had that feeling of community, that feeling of family, that translated 
into a fighting spirit. And it was a spirit that even today, when I visit the campus, I still feel. And it was this fighting spirit that often enough, we surprised our opponents. That fighting spirit has guided Clay Constantino through a fascinating international career. He served as the United States ambassador to Luxembourg during the period of NATO and the European Union expansion. He's directed the finance committees for the campaigns of several U.S. presidential candidates. There are many things I learned at New Jersey City University, but more than anything else, I can say I was inspired. It was a place that I felt empowered. And in my heart of hearts, I know it's where I got my wings. I'm proud to say I was born, raised, and reared in Jersey City. And I come from very humble backgrounds. One of the most memorable experiences of me attending then Jersey City State College was the fact that I had oh, the incredible experience of attending college with my mother. But I can recall back 20 somewhat years ago, 30 years ago, she said that I will get my degree one day. At that time, I had no idea that we would walk across the stage in 1980 as daughter and mother and receive our degree together. I was a political science major, so I got to know many of the political science uh, professors. And one in particular, Catherine Spicer, who has now since passed on, really took an interest in me, and she pushed me beyond where I thought I could even go. I recall one time I had a paper to do for her, and it was an adequate paper. And she said to me, Carol, I know you can do better. And she gave it back to me, and she said, you, you will do better. And she's right. I could do better. I did do better. And I often think of her because she is definitely a person who made sure that I knew that I could pursue my dream to become a lawyer one day. Carol Corbin Walker's success as an attorney is an inspiring story. Carol was the first African-American chair of the New Jersey State Bar Association and the first African-American female to become a partner at the noted New Jersey law firm of St. John and Wayne. Believing that she has an obligation to inspire and empower others, Carol gives generously of her time. She mentors students at her alma mater and at other institutions of higher learning. I can recall that when I chose to go to the school, some people would say, well, why are you going there? And I'm like, what do you mean, why am I going there? That's the best school ever. And I say that now. If someone asks me, what would I tell students who are attending there? I would tell them, feel proud that you are attending New Jersey City University. A successful university, a successful college, a successful institution of higher education really needs to define its purpose and its mission very um, specifically in order to have an impact. We're evolving into one that can redefine and reshape urban missions and urban settings for the new millennium. What can I contribute? Um, what can I do to make life better, not just for myself, but for others as well? That is the real power of, of education. I love New Jersey City University because it enriches the lives of students and the community in a way that is long-lasting.